Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Stegosaurs are a distinctive lineage of Armadonothician dinosaurs that thrived during the Jurassic period. Being the sister group of ankylosaurs, these plate-backed herbivores are best known through the genus Stegosaurus itself, an animal that has long been a staple of dinosaur-related pop culture. However, Stegosauria contains many further genera that are far more poorly known and represented by fragmentary fossil material. As a whole, definitive anatomical features of the group include the possession of enlarged osteoderms, proportionally small skulls equipped with beaked tips, and powerfully muscled forelimbs. The postcranial skeletons tend to be robust, with columnar weight-bearing limbs and massive pelvises convergently similar to those of ankylosaurs. The development of osteodermal spikes as a form of defence was also typical of the group, taken to extremes in its most derived members. These projected from the sides or the tip of the tail, and have been referred to as thagomizers, referencing the Far Side comic by Gary Larson. That these were used to fend off attacking theropods has been demonstrated by fossils of Allosaurus individuals with deep puncture marks in their bones that perfectly match the dimensions of a Stegosaurus tail spike. It is currently not known where or really when Stegosaurs originated. Recent studies by paleontologist Peter Galton have suggested that fossilised osteoderm material found in the early Jurassic Kota formation of India may belong to ankylosaurs. If this is the case, then due to phylogenetic bracketing, stegosaurs must have also diverged by this time. The common ancestor of stegosaurs and ankylosaurs probably resembled the genus Scylidosaurus, being a modestly sized, lightly armoured herbivore. Footprints attributed to the Ichnotax on Deltapodus brodericae from the Middle Jurassic of the UK might be the oldest physical evidence of stegosaurs in the fossil record. Aside from this, the most basal stegosaur known from preserved fossil material is the genus Huayangosaurus, from the Bathonian to Colovian stages of the mid-Jurassic about 165 million years ago. Discovered in the Chinese city of Huayang, this genus was rather small, measuring just 4 metres or roughly 14 feet long, possessing a double row of plates extending down the back and bearing two pairs of thagomizers at the end of the tail. This animal was already broadly similar to later and more derived stegosaurs. However, Huayangosaurus also retained several basal traits, including a rather broad skull with premaxillary teeth, a feature lost in later stegosaurs, proportionally small, slim back plates, and rather gracile limbs that were almost equal in size. This differed from more derived stegosaurs, which had hind limbs significantly longer than the forelimbs. Such features indicate that Huayangosaurus was probably still capable of running, at least slowly. In life, the genus lived alongside the theropod Gassosaurus, and several sauropods including Omaesaurus and Shunosaurus. The animal also gives its name to the family Huayangosauridae, a group of mostly Chinese stegosaurs. Chungkingosaurus was a close relative of Huayangosaurus, and was discovered in slightly younger fossil deposits dating to roughly 160 million years ago. It was also a modestly sized animal, measuring just over 3 metres or 10 feet long, and was native to China. The skull was quite tall and robust for a stegosaur, while the two rows of paired plates running down the back were thin and triangular in shape, being at their tallest over the hips. The tail tip was equipped with two pairs of thagomizers utilised in defence, protecting this slow-moving herbivore from contemporary predators such as the large allosauroid Yangchuanosaurus. The significantly larger stegosaur Tuojangosaurus was also present in the same ecosystem, and the biggest known Huayangosaurid, measuring up to 7 metres or 23 feet long, and had a hip height of 6 feet 6 inches. Large adults could have weighed more than 3 tonnes, and were roughly comparable to white rhinos in terms of size. Like its close relatives, Tuojangosaurus possessed tall and thin back plates, complemented by four tail spikes. In life, the animal was a low-browsing herbivore, feeding on relatively soft plant material such as ferns and horsetails. Like all stegosaurs, the teeth were proportionally small and leaf-shaped, with the genus possessing a relatively weak bite for the overall size of the animal. Interestingly, not all Huayangosaurids were native to China, with some fossil evidence suggesting that the group migrated into Gondwana. The sister genus of Tuojangosaurus, Paranthodon, was a South African animal recovered from the early Cretaceous Kirkwood formation, although the only remains of the genus consist of a partial skull, isolated teeth and vertebral fragments. 
Estimates based on these partial finds suggest that Paranthodon may have been about 5 metres or 16 feet long, although little can be said about the postcranial skeleton. Despite this, the presence of a Cretaceous, Gondwan and Stegosaur is important, in that remains of this group are very rarely found on the southern continents. The presence of Stegosaurs on the southern continent is represented only by possible trackways found in North Africa and Australia. The more derived sister lineage of the Huayangasaurids were the Stegosaurids, which likely originated in China about 160 million years ago. The most basal of these was Jiangjunosaurus, an approximately 6 metre or 20 foot animal, discovered in the Xinjiang region. Another relatively basal Chinese stegosaurid, Gigant Spinosaurus, had a distinctive appearance, possessing greatly enlarged shoulder spines, a relatively large head, and very broad hips. Its back plates were quite small and somewhat uniform in shape and size, while the entire animal was modest in size measuring about 4.2 metres or 14 feet long, and weighed about 700 kilograms or 1,500 pounds. A more famous stegosaurid genus of similar proportions was Kentrosaurus of the late Jurassic Tendaguru formation of Tanzania, once thought to be among the most basal of all stegosaurs due to its small size. Recent studies have consistently placed this genus in a more derived position. Adults were about 4.5 metres long, although additional fossil material has suggested animals of larger sizes, perhaps up to 5.5 metres. The body was characterised by a small head, a long neck, short forelimbs and long hind limbs, and a long horizontal and muscular tail. Typical stegosaurid traits include the elongation and flatness of the head, the powerful build of the forelimbs, erect and pillar-like hind limbs, and an array of plates and spikes running along both sides of the top midline of the animal. Halfway along the back, the plates become increasingly narrow and spiky, a feature which extends down the tail itself. Because the tail had at least 40 caudal vertebrae, it was highly mobile. It could swing in an arc of up to 180 degrees, covering the entire half circle behind the animal. Swing speeds at the tail end may have been as high as 50 km an hour. Continuous rapid swings would have allowed the spikes to slash open the skin of its attacker or to stab the soft tissues and break the ribs or facial bones. The robust hips and tail probably gave Kentrosaurus the ability to stand on its hind legs for brief periods, allowing the animal to reach plants growing at least 10 feet off the ground. Food would have been seized by the beaked jaws, barely receiving any chewing and simply swallowed in large quantities. In life, Kentrosaurus dwelt in a hot, semi-arid environment consisting of shallow lagoons, tidal flats, and vegetated inland ecosystems dominated by coniferous trees. It shared this ecosystem with a variety of poorly understood large theropods, the small Iguanodontian Disaltosaurus, and the sauropods Giraffa Titan, Dicreosaurus, and Torinaria. Moving away from Africa, we come to the late Jurassic European Dacentrurus, one of, if not the largest genus of stegosaurs so far described with an interesting name meaning tail full of points. This animal possibly measured up to 10 metres or almost 33 feet long and weighed at least 5 tonnes. The holotype specimen was found in the Kimmeridge clay formation of southern England and was first described by Richard Owen in 1875. The recovered specimen was quite scrappy and disarticulated, consisting of vertebrae and scattered postcranial elements. Dacentrurus possessed a notably wide pelvis, even for a stegosaur, accommodating a massive gut and pretty thick rear end. Like Kentrosaurus, the back plate shifted into a more spike-like form starting at the hips, extending all the way down the tail. Other fragmentary specimens attributed to the genus have been uncovered in late Jurassic deposits in France, Spain and Portugal, suggesting that Dacentrurus was quite a common animal in the tropical low-lying islands of Western Europe. Following on from this big chonky browser is the derived subfamily Stegosaurinae, the most basal of which was the genus Loricartosaurus, with Loricartosaurus dwelling in what is now France and the UK. Only two partial specimens are known, one from each of the aforementioned countries. Another European Stegosaurine was the unusual Miragaya, a Portuguese genus dating from the Upper Jurassic roughly 150 million years ago. Possessing a peculiarly long neck, comprised of at least 17 vertebrae, Miragaya was a 5.5 to 6.5 meter animal, and inhabitant of the Laurinia formation. Indeed, Miragaya had more neck vertebrae than most sauropods, which contrasts with a traditional view of stegosaurs as low browsers with short necks. 
Only the Chinese sauropod Euhelopus, Mamenchisaurus, and Omesaurus had as many neck vertebrae as Mirigaya, with most sauropods of the late Jurassic possessing only 12 to 15. This odd feature may have arisen due to niche partitioning with other stegosaurs present in the ecosystem, or could have developed due to sexual selection. A possible North American species may have been present at the Morrison Formation as well. Speaking of the Morrison, the oldest known stegosaur from this formation was the genus Hesperosaurus, recovered from sites in Montana and Wyoming dated to circa 156 million years ago. A close relative of Stegosaurus, this 5 metre or 16 foot long animal was overall quite similar in form to its more famous cousin. Its back plates were wider than those of Stegosaurus but were also not as tall, while the skull was possibly shorter and wider. It has also been suggested that Hesperosaurus specimens demonstrate sexual dimorphism, noting that individuals with taller plates may have been female, while those with lower and more rounded plates were males. However, this conclusion has been criticised by Kenneth Carpenter and Kevin Padane due to the sheer difficulty of proving dimorphism in extinct animals. The other Morrison stegosaur was, of course, Stegosaurus itself, a genus that ranks among the most famous of all dinosaurs. The remains of over 80 individual animals of this genus have been found, with these sorted into three confirmed species, Stegosaurus stenops, Stegosaurus ungulatus and Stegosaurus sulcatus. The animal first came to light as one of the many dinosaurs first collected and described in the Bone Wars, and was originally named by Othniel Charles Marsh in 1877, from remains recovered north of Morrison, Colorado. The largest species, Stegosaurus ungulatus, could measure up to 9 metres or 29 feet long and weighed about 5 tonnes. It possessed a double row of kite-shaped spikes that ran along the back, the function of which has been extensively debated, but likely provided use in sexual display or in thermal regulation. Integumentary impressions suggest that the plates were covered with a layer of keratin and were possibly brightly coloured. At the end of the tail were a pair of sharp thagomizers that were used in self-defence, as demonstrated by an Allosaurus vertebra with a puncture mark that perfectly matches the Stegosaurus tail spike. As a slow-moving herbivore, the tail spikes were the animal's main defence from predators, with the throat also being defended by a covering of ossicles. Once thought to have been a waddling, belly-dragging creature, more recent studies have highlighted that Stegosaurus possessed a more upright stance, holding its stomach and tail well above the ground. It was also assumed until recently that the genus possessed a very weak bite, essentially only being able to scrape leaves off branches and little else. However, a 2016 study has indicated that its bite force was higher than expected, being comparable to those living mammals such as sheep and cattle. Based on this data, it is likely that Stegosaurus also ate woodier, tougher plants such as cycads, perhaps even acting as a means of spreading cycad seeds. Footprint evidence also suggests that this genus lived in multi-age herds as a form of protection from the large predators with which it shared its environment, such as Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus and Torvosaurus. Another close relative of Stegosaurus was also the youngest known Stegosaur known from fossil remains, Wuerhosaurus. Present in the early Cretaceous deposits of China and Mongolia between 132 and 113 million years ago, Wuerhosaurus measured up to 7 metres long and weighed in at about 4 tonnes. The limbs were proportionally shorter than those of Stegosaurus, meaning that the animal stood closer to the ground, suggesting a diet of low-growing plants. Stegosaur footprints from the Togulu group in Xinjiang province, China, have also been attributed to this animal. These tracks include the world's smallest stegosaur tracks, measuring just 5.7 centimetres in length, indicative of an adorable baby dinosaur that was approximately cat-sized. As one of the last stegosaurs known from decent fossil material, it has been proposed that East Asia may have represented a refugia of sorts, while the group died out in Europe and North America at the end of the Jurassic. The possible causes of this extinction are not confidently known, but the decline of stegosaurs in the Northern Hemisphere, at least, may have been influenced by the reduction in cycad diversity. Though late Cretaceous stegosaurian fossils have also been reported, these have mostly turned out to be misidentified. A well-known example is Dravidosaurus, known from late Cretaceous fossils found in India. They were originally suggested to be a stegosaurian. In 1991, these badly eroded fossils were suggested to have instead been based on a damaged plesiosaurian pelvis and hind limb material, 
and none of the fossils could demonstrably be resigned to Stegosauria. A purported dermal plate was also recovered from the latest Cretaceous, Maastrichtian Kalamedu formation of southern India. However, Galton and Ayasami interpreted the specimen as a bone of a sauropod dinosaur instead. Nevertheless, the authors considered the survival of stegosaurs into the Maastrichtian to be possible, noting the presence of the stegosaurian ichnotaxon Deltapodus in the Maastrichtian of India. Possible footprints have also been described from Broome, Australia, suggesting that stegosaurs may also have been present in the Cretaceous there as well. However, more fossil material is needed to confirm these speculations. After their extinction, the heavily armoured low-browsing herbivore niche became solely inhabited by the ankylosaurs, which had been rare during the Jurassic, but greatly diversified during the Cretaceous. Although, that is a story for another time. Thanks for watching, everyone. The next episode will cover the so-called Rauisuchians, the large Pseudosuchian apex predators of the late Triassic. See you again soon. Cheerio.